you attract what you are, who you are, the money in your bank account, the health you want. This is the total claim of the book called The Secret. And if you have been around the internet for some time, you would have undoubtedly come across the law of attraction. And in this episode, I very specifically wanted to touch on the law of attraction, especially from the side of money. I am a true skeptic, meaning that I will analyze and overanalyze and over overanalyze, but I'll not be arrogant about it. The first thing that a lot of law of attraction teachers tell you is whatever you give attention to grows and you therefore need to raise your vibration. So this sounds very woolly and fluffy. However, if you think about it, can you really do anything well unless you are putting your focus and attention into that thing? If I don't have any focus on my money, I don't care about money and I'm just spending more than I earn, I just keep swiping my credit card without actually paying attention to the number in my bank account, guess what? I will probably be in debt very soon. And that is what happens to a lot of people. A lot of people are not regularly checking their bank statements statements, regularly checking their bills, and it's no surprise that a lot of people therefore are broke. The same happens in the case of careers, and that reflects in how you perform in your job, and that ultimately reflects in your bank account. So does what you give your attention to grow? Yeah, it does positively and negatively because you know I have this aunt who will always worry guess what the more she worries the more worried she becomes it's either a virtuous cycle or a vicious cycle it's in your control to kick off one of the cycles in my personal experience this has seemed true for most parts they also talk about raising your vibration which I think in a way is to say you are the average of the five people you talk to the most Therefore, choose those five people very carefully and you want to be in the frequency or alongside people who want the same things in life as you so that you are all helping each other out. I think that makes complete sense, which is why I'm a part of a lot of entrepreneur communities. I'm a part of a lot of professional networks. I host a professional network called the Six Figure Club. Link to join in the description. And I think it makes complete sense to me. The next thing they talk about is infallibility of the law of attraction. I'll be honest, they say that you need to take this on face value and have faith in it because I'm not someone who is of a lot of faith. This seems difficult for me to accept because I don't know whether it's infallible or not. The next thing they say is treat yourself as you would want to be treated by others. I'll be honest, I have suffered from a lot of imposter syndrome. I still suffer from a lot of imposter syndrome. Most of us have a lot of self-doubt, a lot of negative talk in our heads. Am I good enough to do this? Who am I to do this? The more we keep dwelling on that self-doubt, I think they say the universe realizes that you are not worthy of it. And I don't know about the universe, but I do know that if I sound not confident as my audience, as my spectator, you won't believe me. I remember once upon a time, and this was about seven, eight years on back. I am a data expert, right? I am a financial services expert. So I was going to a client and I was really filled with self-doubt about how much I know. And my partner asked me, are you confident in your answer? And I was like, yeah, I am confident. So she asked me, then why the self-doubt? Why the imposter syndrome? And I told her, well, I don't know what I don't know. And this is the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's one of those things when you are a bit of an expert in something, you think you know everything about it. And then as you learn more about it, you realize you know nothing about it. And then eventually you peek on the other side and you become the true expert. And then you're confident goes up again. But in the middle, most of us feel this harrowing imposter syndrome where we start doubting ourselves. And when we doubt ourselves, we don't stand in our confidence. If we are not confident, how will anyone else find confidence in buying what we are saying or what we are selling or the work that we have delivered? So in short, I do think that you are your first customer. You need to make yourself believe that you are worthy of the thing or you have done a good job. And this is, I suppose, what they call the love frequency. Interesting choice of words. And that is why I think a lot of people get alienated from the law of attraction 
But essentially what it means is that unless you believe in yourself, no one else believes in you. The next thing they say is believe in your creative prowess. Believe that your thoughts have power. Believe that you will receive what you ask for. And they ask you to visualize and manifest that. Now, what do I think about this? I believe that my thoughts have power because when I think I want to do something, I set that up as a goal and then I have a plan of how I want to achieve that goal. And then I follow through with action. The problem with a lot of this talking is they ask you to believe, they ask you to visualize, they ask you to manifest, but they don't talk as much about the action. But what I think is if you really thought of yourself to be a future version of you that's healthy or well the or happy you would want to go into the tiniest details of what is it that makes this person happy what is it that this person eats what is it that this person does for a living get into the nitty-gritty specifics you start visualizing so vividly that you start understanding whether you're a fit to that visualization or not sometimes you might realize that actually that's not the life that you want and you therefore do something completely different with your actions. And this is the thing, how do you achieve anything without knowing what you want to achieve? It's not only enough to visualize or set a goal. You have to have a plan of action and then act. Because without action, it's just pointless. There's a process from you being the current version of you and to you being that version of you. And you have to walk the few steps between the two versions. You have to fill the gap. You have to take action. That is where, honestly, I think the law of attraction is short. The next thing they say is feelings are extremely powerful. And you want to therefore move from negative feelings to positive feelings. So stop the self-doubt because self-doubt is a very negative feeling. How can you change it into a positive feeling? And I know sometimes this is really hard for people, but what I like to focus on is what I want to do as opposed to what I don't want to do. And when I focus on what I want to do, I am filled with inspiration and motivation to go towards that. But when I focus on what I don't want to do, it's like worry breeds worry. And that's probably what they are talking about. Then they talk about my mindset and this is the big one they talk about improving your awareness setting your expectations and having a mindset of abundance awareness how do you improve your awareness one of the ways that most people suggest is meditation and in my case i did not go to meditation because of the law of attraction i wanted to meditate because that was my calling at that point in life and since then i just have been into meditation i have meditated for every single day for the past how many ever years and i would say that it's improved my awareness of my surroundings significantly so just being able to quieten down your mind for some time has tremendous positive effects so yeah agree with that the second thing they talk about is expectations it's not enough to visualize you have to have an action plan so that you know what to expect so being very intentional and very planned about this year more than I have been in the previous years and I think planning really helps because I know what I'm supposed to do when and that sets in stone the plan of action for me what I need to be when and the next thing they suggest is imagine abundance imagine that there's limitless possibilities and I think this is very difficult for a lot of people but obviously this channel is called the abundance psyche and that's for a reason I realized five years or so back when I bought the domain is that abundance is truly your perception you can choose to view everything as being abundant or not when you choose to believe that the universe has limitless possibilities for you the world has limitless possibilities for you you. you could be anyone in the world that you wanted to be. Of course, you might not get there in one year, five years, 10 years, even 50 years. That's fine, but it's still possible. They don't have anything over you other than a positive outlook. And honestly, that's been one of the things that's dramatically changed my life. Now, all in all, do I agree with the law of attraction? I think it's really interesting as a concept. I think it probably works. I don't know whether it works for sure or not. I can't tell. But a lot of principles like 
you need to be confident in yourself, you need to have a goal, you need to plan. I think all of these are really good concepts and makes complete sense. I agree with being the average of the five people you are closest to. They call it raising your vibration or being in the vibration. I wouldn't call it that, but yeah, I think interesting choice of words, probably even inspiring choice of words where I do have a bit of disagreement with is when they talk about raising your vibration, because I don't think there's anything to raise. No one's better or worse than anyone. It's just that at that point in life, what is it that you need? And you need people to support that goal in your life and you want the community that supports that goal the best it doesn't mean that people who are pursuing another goal are better or worse than you so that's my only observation around that but as a principle i agree with it what i think it's sometimes a bit lacking on is the fact that it doesn't sometimes inspire action sometimes it seems that you sit and meditate cross-legged and everything will come to you in life unfortunately it doesn't work like that but a lot of people have been misguided by law of attraction teachers and then they complain that it's not worked for them a few of the behaviors that the secret suggests gratitude act as if vision boarding or visualizations and praising and blessing and i wanted to talk about each of those bit more. The first one is gratitude. I think gratitude is such a powerful emotion that when you are in gratitude, you can't be angry, you can't be sad. It is just that one emotion that destroys every other negative emotion that you have, which is why I think they ask you to be grateful, be in gratitude, because whatever you pay your attention to grows and you feel better and better. So it helps in inculcating that positive mindset. Second, act as if I think we have already spoken quite a lot about how you need to act, how just vision boarding isn't going to be enough. But sometimes act as if can mean fake it till you make it. And I don't really like that concept of faking it till you make it. I really resonate with Amy Cuddy's concept of fake it till you become it. And it recognizes that we might not feel confident in the moment. And this is exactly what my partner had told me seven years or eight odd years back that helped tremendously with my imposter syndrome so I would choose the other path than act as if but I get the point of it you want to understand how this person is living their life and how that life fits into your life and if you had that how would you feel how would you act how would you be and does that fit next one vision boarding I think it is another way of saying set goals set goals that you want to achieve and obsess about those goals what I think sometimes happens is people set such huge goals say for example if you are just starting out and you are thinking I want to make this 10 million dollar company I would suggest well think about how do you get to a 10,000 dollar revenue first before you jump to a 10 million dollar company there are so many steps in between that sometimes we limit ourselves by setting goals that are ginormous and our mind cannot fathom the plan to get there and I have been a victim of that if I'm honest I am a very ambitious person who sets ambitious goals and therefore I think my only advice would be set realistic goals that you think that you can achieve in the next six months one year two years or at least you can plan to achieve in the next even five years the next one they talk about is praise and bless again it relates back to that positive mindset being grateful as long as you're praising someone you feel the gratitude you feel how good the world around you is. And I think this does impact your beliefs around money. If you keep being negative about taxes or the rich, I think that just breeds negativity. I would much rather be in the space that I can control because for sure I cannot control what the prime minister is going to do, what the government is going to do. Then what's the point of me thinking about it? I would much rather focus on things that I can control. And I think one of the parting thoughts I would leave you with is 
What is it that you can share with the world? What is it that you can give to the world abundantly that you have a lot of and that you can share and you don't feel poorer and you can give more and more and more. And if you tune into that, if you truly identify that as a strength, you can go on and share that with the world. The world will probably decide to pay you because you have done such a great job at that. All in all, I think the law of attraction is great, but take action. Without which, there's no point in just attracting because the law of attraction needs to be followed by the law of action. Okay, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this, drop me a comment in the chat below. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It does help me out a lot. And I'll see you the next time. Bye.